beautiful Sunday. It seems like I've been away for about a couple of weeks and it was only one week, but I give God thanks that I'm back, I'm old, and I had a wonderful, wonderful time in Black Point, it's so long. It was truly, truly great. And I give God thanks that I came back safe and full of energy and love for Him. And so as we begin this service this morning, our choir will lead us in Detroit.
that you also love one another. Lord, have mercy upon us, and by all means your laws in our hearts and diseases. In the moment of silence as we confess our sins to God. Amen, and together our open confession to God. Amen. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray, and free us from joyful obedience to Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Hear the words of grace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Thank you, Father. Now we stand as we sing the Lord's Prayer and remain standing for the response of prayer. <laughs>
reaching out with that which is poor. We may run the way of our kindness, and we may run with everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as our superintendent minister, Reverend Alcina, and more comes with words of doubt and confusion. A very pleasant good morning to all. Good morning. It is so good to see you all this morning. I was battling this morning, even though I had another hour. I was playing with the time, and the time did not play with me. <laughs> well, indeed, I tried to be a little early. Well, I mean, I'm always on time, right? So I, um, I was gauging the time. I was speaking with Alexa, you know Alexa, and I was wondering if Alexa would uh, do me some justice, and because uh, I know that I had an hour to play with, and so four o'clock went, five o'clock went, and when you look now, it was six o'clock, and I say no, I have to get up, <laughs> and so I was up, and uh, it's so good to see all of you. You have an hour to play with, yes, and God is good. All the time, and all the time, God is good. The sun has come up so early and so bright and so beautiful. And then there's a hymn that goes to, Fields are wet with diamond dew. We have a nice draft this morning. It almost looked like snow. And so it was nice and cool as well. And so I welcome all of you this morning as we worship God together, those who are worshiping with us via media. I'd like to say thanks to our musicians, our technicians, our ushers, the choristers, those who will read, and also to Sister Pat Dickinson, who is our liturgist for this morning. Uh, also, I see a little familiar face there, uh, Brother Maurice Linton, Esquire, and um, some other persons who were away, and welcome back, and it was good to see you. I'd also like to give greetings to our celebrants for this month. And remember that September is still the best month, no matter which month comes along. Amen? Yes. Yes, yes. yes I hear some yes in there, so it, it has to be so. And so happy birthday goes out to Annabelle Thompson and Evelyn Johnson and Javon Bullard. And so we're going to sing for them and also ask God's blessing upon their day. So bless us now and bless all of our celebrants. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> and our thanks to Reverend Simo for those warm words of welcome. And we continue the service as we stand and sing, Master, speak thy servant hearing. Please stand. Thank mm -hmm.
you know, I have to say, I came in here somewhat heavy this morning, and I said, Lord, no, guide me through this service. You know, I am feeling so upbeat because of the first two hymns. Um, Savior like a shepherd laid me, and Master speak. I remember my mother this morning. When you wake up through the night, she's just singing all these beautiful hymns. And these were amongst her favorites. And so I give God thanks for that memory this morning and for the uplifting of me to continue in this service. So to God be all praise, honor, and glory. Amen. Amen. And now together, before we receive the word of God, we pray our prayers of illumination. Page five. Lord, your word abides, even when you do not read it and understand it. But oh, what a joy when your word brings light to our dark understanding. Bless your word unto our hearts and magnify your name in our light. Amen. And we would receive God's word this morning, first by Brother Jody Rowe, and our second reading by Sister Morning Mary. as God 
God's word, which is also at work in you, believers. Brothers and sisters, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We give God thanks for our readers this morning and who have done so beautifully. May God continue to bless you as you serve in this part of this vineyard. And now our selection. We know we won't have a service if we don't have the selection by our superintendent minister. And this morning is no different. Even though he was trying to fight it to get up this morning with the extra hour. But still yet yeah, he's ready. And so I now invite our superintendent minister with the selection. And then I ask you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel followed by the sermon. Amen. Thank you, Sister Pat. Now the boys have to get up now. <laughs> I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear
1 to 12. Glory to you, Lord God. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore, do whatever they teach you and follow it, but do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of others. But they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all the deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and best seats in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one another, and you are all brothers and sisters. And call no one your father on earth, for you have but one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. All who exalt themselves will be humble, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. so well 
because he said that they love to choose their places wherever they went. They love to be called master and to throw around their authority. But Jesus said, whoever wanted to be great among his disciples must be the servant of all the disciples. People who exalt themselves will become low, and those who humble themselves, Jesus said, will be exalted. There is a song sung by the Grace Thrillers, and it's, it goes something like this. If I am too high, Lord, bring me down. Sometimes we get so proud, the song says, and so mighty. But if I am too high, Lord, bring me down. If there is something in my life, I want you to move it out of the way. And if I am too high, Lord, bring me down. If I am too high, Lord, bring me down. I want to be humble, Lord, bring me down as I travel through this land, trying to do the best I can. If I am too high, Lord, dear Lord, bring me down. There is a certain attitude we ought to display as Christians, and that is the attitude of humility and the service. And this is what Jesus was teaching his disciples, uh, that we should be humble in service. But Jesus was teaching his disciples this service juxtaposed or alongside that of the Pharisees. And uh, Jesus was saying, this is not the way that you should look at it, or this is not the way that you should do it. You know, you can be forceful and still be humble, you know? Did you know that? Yes, I, I think I did allude to you a time ago that if you go to a place and, and the staff seem to be giving you a hard time, all you need to do is ask for the boss or the manager. And I remember one time I was getting a little hard time and I did ask for the manager and the man said to me, I am the manager. <laughs> <laughs> I say, oh boy, I have to settle for this. <laughs> but even a manager, how a manager, anyway. <laughs> and so the scribes had a style all their own. And the higher they climbed in their service, the more they exposed their own image of themselves. Service should be done with a smile, and no one should be made to feel like serving God is a burden. We are all coming to church again, and I am tired, buddy. Man, this service is killing me. It's too much service. <laughs> you should never be tired of serving God, amen? Amen. You need to know where that air coming from that goes in your lungs. <laughs> and the strength that you get is not from the food that you eat, you know. It's what God gives you. Because you can eat the best food and still be weak. Yes, and so, if we get tired, let us say we get tired of church, but not tired of God. Amen? Amen. For indeed it is God who gives us everything and gives us health and strength. You cannot... Uh, go back to yesterday to get anything to help us. We must move on into the future. Move on. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep doing the things that God wants us to do. Maybe you didn't do it yesterday, but today is an opportunity to do it better. Amen? Amen. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. The scribes and the Pharisees were really about service. If they were really about service, they would have done what they had to do instead of watching Jesus. They were always watching Jesus. They wanted to see what he's going to do next. And so Jesus always did some of the healings. If you would uh, follow in the Gospels, you'd see that Jesus did most of his healings on the Sabbath. The man with the withered hand, he told him, I'll stretch your hand, you know. And the man did, and his hand was healed. And most of this healing, the woman uh, who was bent over and so on, Jesus did most of those healings on the Sabbath. And so they always watched Jesus and they did not like what Jesus did. I would think that you would like to see miracles, right? Miracles are nice, but don't do it on the Sabbath. 
Jesus compares them to whitewashed tombs, but full of rotten bones. It is true that the scribes and the Pharisees were more feared than revered. They were more like religious policemen than spiritual healers. They abhorred the healings of Jesus, and any time Jesus did a healing, they questioned them, especially on the Sabbath. The scribes and the Pharisees were just as Jesus said, not the ones to follow. They did not have the right attitude for religious leaders. They were not like saying, uh, they, they would not say, uh, follow me, but do as I say. They had no authority like Jesus had. And so when they assumed authority, it was very distasteful and disgraceful. I always say that when it comes to service, there is enough room for everybody. We don't need to fight over serving God. Amen? Amen. You'll never find enough people to serve God. Because there's always somebody complaining about something and they will not do anything. And if you meet somebody doing something and you say you can do it better, then you go ahead and do it. Amen? Amen. Because that is how it is. And so, sometimes we say, get somebody else. I've done it before. The Pharisees and the scribes saw how people flocked to Jesus. And they were very jealous of Jesus. Um, but what Jesus was not doing was condemning people. Jesus was not condemning people. If you really look in the Gospels, and when you, when you hear the word gospel, it means good news. Jesus was really giving the people good news. He was not policing them, but rather inviting them. Inviting them to come to a better life and to the kingdom. Rather, the scribes and the Pharisees were like, don't you do that on the side. Don't you do this. Don't you. Don't, 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 don't. And the persons may not like that. I know Miles Monroe said that graveyard is full of persons who had talents and gifts and never used them. And so I believe what he was trying to, what he was saying, alluding to, is that if you have a gift and a talent, use it for God. Amen? Amen? Nothing wrong with that. I often speak about a lady who made some great cheesecakes, and I ask her for a recipe, and she refused to give it to me. And she went to a grave with a recipe. <laughs> but I am proud to say today that I make cheesecake 10 times better than she does. <laughs> Nobody was born knowing everything. Somebody had to teach somebody something. Amen? Amen? So then service from all of us should be with a smile. And Jesus gave the best service. Jesus did not say, hey, listen, I'm the son of God. You don't expect me to do that. But rather, Jesus was humble in his service. And then he took the towel, put it around his neck, and was trying to wash Peter's feet. Peter said, no, no, Lord, you can't wash my feet. And Jesus said, if I don't wash your feet, you're not worthy of me. You've got no part with me. Peter said, well, go ahead and wash me all over. <laughs> <laughs> and that is what Jesus urges us to do. Wash one another's feet. It is a sign of humility. It is not saying you must go around washing people's feet. We do it on, uh, well, I, we did it uh, on uh, the Holy Week, but I'm, I'm just saying that it's a sign of humility to do something like that. And in those days, it was very customary because persons used to walk around uh, on those dusty roads. And when you enter the house, I think it might have been something that persons would do wash the dust off your feet and um, allow you to feel good again. But that is the mark of a true leader humility. So then when we wear these stoles, which are a mark of a yoke of obedience, it is not just for the prettiness and for the seasons, but it also it should remind us to be humble and to, to give service. 
the stole is significant of a towel that you would put around your neck when you wash the feet of someone and dry them with it. It is a sign of a servant with the yoke of obedience. In order for us to be servants, we must put ourselves in God's hands or we would be tired or we would be discouraged or disinterested or we would not be doing anything. So we take the hymn writer who says, take my life and let it be consecrated Lord to thee. Take my hands, take my voice, take my silver, take my gold, take everything and use me. You know there's a pop song that go, all of me, why don't you take all of me? Can't you see I'm nothing without you? You know that song? Yes. <laughs> well, I don't need to sing it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Another song says, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my heart, Lord, and my feet. Or touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you can use anything, you can use me. And there's another one that says, Lord, I am available to you. My will I give to you. I'll do what you say do. Use me, Lord, to show someone the way. And all of these are examples of how persons have availed themselves to God, not just in word, but in deed. And yes, if we lift up ourselves, we will fail. But when Jesus lifts us up, then we will never fail. Amen? We cannot fail or fall when we are servants of the Most High. We cannot fail or fall when we are led by the Master's hands. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we spoke of the scribes and the Pharisees and how they boosted themselves in showiness. Help us not to be showy, but to be humble in service in all that we do and all that we say, never looking for the pain, but always looking to be blessed by you. For indeed, every day is a blessing. As we come to you, Lord, we know that you are the fountain of blessings. You pour out your spirit upon us like water in a dry and thirsty land. You give us joy and peace where there is no hope. And you give us spring of life through Jesus, your Son. And as we come to you this morning, we stand in the gap for many, for the world, as we consider persons who are dying every day on what we call a battlefield in different countries, those who are demonstrating, those who are hungry, those who suffer from needless anxiety, those who drop bombs, those, O oh Lord, who do not care about human life, we bring them all before you, leaders of countries around the world. We bring them before you, those who are hungry, those who are diseased, those who are displaced because of political evils or natural disasters, those, O oh Lord, who suffer needlessly at the hands of abuses. We bring before you our government, meaning government and the opposition, asking, O oh Lord, that even as we have this by-election here in Freeport, that persons will still know that we are Bahamians, whether we are one side or another. We pray for those who are in shanty towns and what the government decides to do, knowing, O oh Lord, that you have told us to be careful how we treat foreigners and widows and orphans. We bring before you our own people. We ask the Lord that you would help us in our daily living. Entrepreneurs, those who are visitors to these shores, 
those who walk, who walk the streets, those who are in schools, those who are principals, those who, walk, who are parents and guardians of children, those who are in business, we pray for their prosperity. We continue to pray for that no hurricanes will come to these shores and that all would dissipate in the sea. Send us the rain, O oh Lord, and not the storm waves that break up everything and mash up everything. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would help us as a people to be loving and caring and humble to each other. We pray for those who die on the streets. We pray that no blood will be shed. We look forward to that day when we would put down our ammunition and beat our, beat our swords into plowshares and study one or more. But there will be no vigilante or retaliation. The persons who truly know that there is peace when you are in their hearts and minds and lives. We pray for those who are in beds of affliction right now, those whose bodies are wrought with pain, those who the doctors have given up on, those whose medication doesn't work anymore. Lord, we know that you are Dr. Jesus. You can heal them and touch them. Touch them right now, O Lord, we pray, from the soul, crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Every blood vessel, every sinew, every nerve, every cell, every muscle, Lord, touch, heal, and restore. We bring ourselves before you, Lord. You know us, you know our weaknesses, you know our strengths. You know our desires. Help us and conform us to your way. Bless us now, we pray. In Jesus' name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. We give thanks to God for such a moving sermon this morning, um, talking about humility. You know, humility is something, or it's difficult sometimes for us to be humble, but that's what God demands of us. And so, Rev, we give you thanks for reminding us to be humble, to know that that's part of God's command for us. But I have one thing I'm going to say, Red. You really, really did it to me this morning. I must tell Jesus. You know, I talk about my mother this morning. And I said, Lord, she must be looking down and saying, oh, wow, they're thinking about me this morning. Because that was another one of her favorite hymns. You get up through the night and you will hear her singing, I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me. Jesus alone. And so I give God thanks for those pleasant memories. Those unexpected memories some days that you must deal with. They're not pleasant all the time because of the memory, but we give thanks. And so I would be very brief, I hope, with our announcements this morning. I join Rev with and congratulating those who are celebrating birthdays during the week. Also, I'm reminding all of us that our, the Christmas season is fast approaching and we want to beautify the church to see what we did for independence. We want to do something during the Christmas season and we know sponsors. So please, whatever it is, you can bring a donation to the church towards um, sponsors. And if you're celebrating a birthday, anniversary, whatever you're celebrating, you can give a donation towards the purchase of the sponsors. Bible study continues every Thursday at 6.30. <clears throat> Sorry. Now we have started a Methodist Appreciation and Memories Hall. And our first person was Mrs. Ware. And we're asking you to continue on with this, a reading it and listening. But our heartiest congratulations goes out to Sister Perlin Bain, who has arranged such a wonderful, wonderful <laughs> Thank you, Sister Dane, a woman for all seasons. Yes, we have uh, St. Paul's Women's Fellowship that holds the games tonight. That's tomorrow evening, right here at 6 30. Men, you're invited. Come out and enjoy. Refreshments will be available. Donation is $5 and it includes a drink and snack. It's going to be a fun evening, fun for all, and also a fundraiser. 
Our hot meetings and events for November are listed. I want you to please take a note of that, especially our harvest service on November 19th, our Thanksgiving Fun Day, November 25th, and our harvest closing service on November 30th. Our EPCI committee November meetings, our online meetings are listed, and please take note. Please remember our sick and our shut-ins and pray and call a visit whenever you are able. Now I have another announcement that I need to make right here. And this comes on um, invitation to us from New Hope Methodist Church. We know that uh, New Hope um, is up the road. Um, we worship with them. They worship with us from time to time. We're not going to go into the history of the church. But we want, they're inviting us for their 30th anniversary of, as a church here in Grand Bahama. And their service will be held on Sunday, November 12th, which is next week Sunday. It's an 11 a.m. service, and it's the thing, only what is done for Christ will last. And it's based on Matthew 6, 2021. And another note, they say, this year our beloved Bahamas celebrated its 50th and golden anniversary as we in the Bahamas Conference of the Bahamas Church, and specifically the New Hope Methodist Church congregation here in Grand Bahama, celebrate our 30th and third anniversary. This signifies 30 years of unbroken witness, outreach <laughs> programs, and ministry here in Grand Bahama. And so they are invited if you, you can call, the numbers are here, but I encourage you to call the church office for further information. But please, us as a sister church, us friends, us family, let us try and support next Sunday at 11 a.m. You know, we look around and I see so many who have come out this morning, members of the 7 a.m. congregation as we resume. And, you know, wonderful things have happened from this 7 a.m. service. One of them, I remember, and on Friday I had to laugh when I read one of the announcements in the chat. And I remember this young person coming in church every Sunday morning. And he would go to Mrs. Williams, and he would just lay on her arms and suck his finger, and in no time he's snoring. <laughs> I mean snoring. <laughs> and one Sunday, Bishop Rowe decided he wanted to get, put a mic in his hand. And right here in the choir, if you and I do Sunday, mic was put in his hand, and he did a solo piece. And the rest is history, because he was on top of the world. <laughs> and then we saw him in the sound room, you know, controlling that. And now today, we congratulate him as for being a, a selected as deputy head boy of St. Paul's Methodist College for the 2024 October. I'm sure I'm please, please, please. You don't have to suck your finger, just come and let's take it off. Multiplied. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
and how we're going to get it if we don't pray. And so we look to God and ask Him to receive this gift we offer, oh God, and bless them with your love and power. Use them in the struggle for justice and the work for healing and peace undertaken by your faithful people here and every year. In the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And now you can offer your. <laughs> Thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. 
It is good. It is a good and pleasant thing. Joyful and salutary. Always and everywhere give thanks and praise. Lord God, ever living, ever blessed, almighty, all loving. Through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, you created all things and made us in your image. And when we had fallen into sleep, you gave him to be our Savior. He shared our human nature and lived a, full, lived a fully human life. He suffered rejection and condemnation and died on the cross. You raised him up from the dead and you exalted him to be to, to the glory of your right hand. Where he reigns forever as priest and king and makes intercession for us. In witness of his glory and honor, you poured out the Holy Spirit, building up many people into one body, making us living members of your holy church and enabling us to stand before you to sing your praises and celebrate your mighty acts. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we join in the hymn of everlasting praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the night in which he was betrayed took bread into his hands, and looking up to heaven, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ has come again. The bread which you break is a sharing in the body of Christ. Amen. The cup of blessing which we bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. So we are living in your own body because we share the one love and I take this name. Let us pray our prayer of humble access. May we sing that. Lord, we come to your table. Trust in his mercy. We come to make the goodness of our own. We are not ready to gather the points under your table. But it is our nature always to have mercy. And on that we depend. So lead us to the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son. That we may forever live in him and in us. Amen. You will truly and sincerely repent of your sins, are in love and charity with your neighbor, and have resolved to lead a new life following the commandments of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Draw near in faith, receive the body, the bread which is the body broken for you, and the wine which is the blood shed for you. Feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Draw near. <laughs>
pray the prayer of thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet, prepared for all mankind. Closing him, how sweet the name of Jesus sounds, the offering for the next one that will be received. <laughs> Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest in the Bible with each of us now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you.